about, you, you mentioned how you, you have all these thoughts and ideas, and this might be what you're more famous for online, about how like software is getting getting slower, bloatier, less performance. Can you give some specific examples? Uh, sure. And I guess uh, it there are many examples. So I'll pick one that happens to be recorded by me in a way that's very easy to see, but okay. it may not be the best one for your purposes. So I'm happy to go through other examples. It's a podcast. So I'm trying to tell an interesting anecdote, right? Uh, <laughs> Great. <laughs> so in the old days, in say circa the year 2004 or something like that, quite some time ago, okay. two decades now, if you were to load Visual Studio, Microsoft's dev environment, which we all used as the debugger, we didn't necessarily use it as the editor, but in those days we used it as a debugger and many people did use it as their editor, as an IDE, either way. Mm -hmm. It loaded pretty much instantly. You know, it wasn't maybe as fast as it could have been, but it was very quick. <clears throat> you could load projects to debug and they loaded pretty much instantly. And when you stepped through the code, the watch window updated instantly. You hit step and the value is immediately there. You fast forward to today. Well, I'll include the antidote. Fast forward to 2017. And I was talking about this on a live stream. And someone from the developer studio team actually contacted me. And they're like, we'd like you to give <laughs> feedback on the program. And one of the things in this little feedback questionnaire they sent me was, how long should it take to load a project in Visual Studio? And the smallest number, the minimum you oh, could no. pick was less than 10 seconds. Oh no. So the, See, only, I... the only number they could conceive <laughs> of as being low was like 10 seconds. They're like, well, if it's less than that, then why would it, right? I never experienced that, by the way. I, I never experienced Visual Studio loading instantly. I think the first version of Visual Studio yeah. I was on was like 2011 or 2013. And yeah, it's yeah. always been a hell to oh, open. Yes. Yes, and uh, and and the and the debugger has been similarly incredibly slow. The reason I brought this one up as a simple example uh, is because a, it's not really doing it like the the excuse most people use is well, I'm sure it's got way more features now than it used to have, with no explanation of why features in the program would change the speed at which an integer can be displayed in the watch window, right? In <laughs> which says to me uh, again. Motivation for computer enhance. It says to me that modern programmers have no idea how various aspects of a program affects other aspects. To them, more features just means everything is slower. Like if I add a feature to the editor in Visual Studio, it means that the watch window goes from being instantaneous to taking several seconds to like update. Right. I have no idea how a programmer gets there in their head, but that is what they think. And I'm trying to counteract that. But Back to the point. The reason I picked that antidote is there is a video of me online where I went back and I recorded this so that people don't have to believe me. I took a machine from 2004. I show the stats of that machine. It is embarrassing. It's something that could not even load like a modern program. Right? Google that Chrome probably can't load on it. Yeah. And I show the same project, the same project and the same files loading and stepping through the watch window on both of them. And people could not wrap their head around it. They were like, there must be something else. Like, no, there's nothing else. It's just bad code. There's no, it's bad programming practices <laughs> make slow code. There isn't something else. It was a million really bad decisions that now are almost impossible to speed up. Which tees up another point if you want to get to it later in the podcast, which is the idea that performance is about hotspots. But hmm. you could put that in in your quiver if you I want. I definitely fire that want to ask about that okay. um, because that sounds very interesting, and I don't think I'll get another chance. So uh, anyway, I'm happy to go through other examples. I don't know if that example was the kind of thing you were looking for, but that was the first thing that came to mind that people can easily go watch me demonstrating on a yeah. video so that they know what I'm talking about. No, that okay, so that's a great example. So Microsoft Visual Studio, to be clear, we're not talking about Visual Studio code that a lot of listeners might also be familiar oh, with. This yes, is sorry. Microsoft Visual, yes. and it is like, I mean, load it up on your computer. I, I believe today it is still extremely slow. Last yes. time I tried it, I think it took about 20 minutes on my machine. Or it's, it's, 20 a, minutes, 20 seconds on my it's, machine. It's very slow, yes. Uh, yeah, it's uh, open and, a very simple project. And to hit more to home too, like Microsoft Teams recently went through a thing where they're like, we we completely rewrote this thing or partially rewrote this thing to massively speed up the boot time of Teams. And they're like, we got it down from 20 seconds to 10 seconds or something like that. And again, you're just like, it's a chat client, right? 
What's Either way, I'm good enough to get a coffee. Like, yes. Yeah, and uh... people again, the excuse parade comes out, and they're like, "I'm sure it was just checking credentials or whatever." It's like that cash this stuff. Like that is how that works. Like, let the user start interacting if if you really. And plus, why did it take ten seconds to check credentials? What is going right. on there? Modern internet is like millisecond ping times. Like, even if you were talking about something where you're intentionally. Uh, taking a long time to salt a, and and decrypt a password, that should have been a progress bar. So I'm pretty sure that is not what was happening, right? If the, if it's really that kind of a thing, we're talking right. about something very different, which is probably a bunch of serial dependency chain server round trips that are just taking this long because no one actually thought about how it should start up, and off you go. Anyway, it's a fantastic example. So what the the underlying problem? Like so far, we've talked about like well. Programmers either aren't taught or maybe aren't given time or don't care. I guess, let me just ask you, like, what is the, what do you believe the primary driver is for a pro proliferation of slow software? Is it just lack of education? Is it lack of caring? Is it business people? It's lack of education or lack of culture, you might say. So okay. saying lack of caring suggests that people were taught this or taught that it was good or that the culture believes it's good, but then they themselves are personally deciding not to care. But I don't think that's the case. I'm sure that would yeah. be the case for some, but probably very few programmers, right? Just people who are just lazy and don't care. And that's right. Fine, right. There's going to be some number, but is that the majority? I don't think so. The reason I don't think so is because if you look at what it is culturally acceptable in programming to care about, such as knowing how a Docker container works, knowing how React.js works, programmers eat that stuff up. Those things are at least as complicated as learning how a CPU works. These are massive API sets with tons of gotchas and weird behind, and people love a like, here's, insider tips on how to, you know, do this thing in Docker that you didn't think you could do. I mean, an example I've used on a on a podcast before was I was like, if you can learn how CSS works and actually successfully get a page layout looking halfway decent in CSS, you can learn assembly language. It's easier to understand. It's less complex. There are less special cases. And so the idea that programmers are too lazy, or something to learn and employ this stuff, I think is simply false. It is that culturally they have been taught and are working with peers who think that somehow it's virtuous to not know how a computer works. And that is the problem. Every person who programs for a living should know how a computer works and care whether the thing that they're shipping is living up to some reasonable percentage of the performance of the hardware that they're given. It doesn't have to go all the way and shouldn't go all the way because there's diminishing returns in terms of effort that you're going to put into it. But in terms yeah. of just wasteful squandering of computation power, that should have culturally gone away a long time ago, but regretfully, it is still with us today. So I think it is 100% a culture education problem, however you want to put that down, not a problem with engineers themselves individually deciding to be bad actors.